guys, almost 60 years old. Bodybuilding has been around since at least the 19th century, when the father of modern bodybuilding, Eugene Sandow, started putting on what he called muscle display performances. Pretty soon, these performances turned into contests and they spread all over the world. But they didn't achieve meaningful mainstream success until the 1970s, when a man came from Austria with a dream and turned bodybuilding into a worldwide phenomenon. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm in heaven. But he didn't do it naturally, and neither did the millions of people who tried to emulate him. After becoming one of the biggest movie stars on Earth, and even the governor of California, Arnold admitted to using steroids. In the almost 40 years since Arnold first burst onto the scene, it has now gotten out of control and fake bodybuilders have gone to outrageous lengths to get built. Here are 10 of the most extreme cases. Hey listen, if you don't know who I am, turn the video off right now. In the good old days, before CGI was what it is today, the Hulk had to be played by a real person. For a few years, that person was the bodybuilder Lou Ferrigno. Although he did more flexing than actual fighting in his Hulk, it was still an iconic role. And even 40 years later, it's inspired people all over the world. Like the Brazilian bodybuilder Romario Alves, who calls himself the Brazilian Hulk. Not long ago, he was a normal enough guy, working as a security guard by day and working out in the gym in his free time. But to make the jump from muscular, normal person to the bulging Brazilian Hulk that he is today, he needed some unnatural help. So he turned to Synthol. Synthol is a cocktail of oil, alcohol, and lidocaine, which is an anesthetic. It fills your muscles with oil, numbs them, and turns them hard, mimicking the appearance of properly developed muscles. Obviously, injecting this stuff into your body is bad news, and it has all sorts of negative side effects, like nerve damage, blocked arteries, strokes, and even oil-filled cysts. So Alves the Brazilian Hulk, after injecting this stuff for a few years, got infections in his enormous biceps and came within an inch of having them amputated. The doctor told me that they would need to amputate both arms, he said. Everything in there, all my muscles were rock. It was either that or cut all of my muscles out. In the end, the doctors removed his hardened muscles and he went back to bodybuilding as usual. Although you can still see the remnants of his injections and he still calls himself the Hulk. He posts videos on his Instagram account and YouTube channel all the time, looking very muscular and completely green. But Alves isn't the only Hulk. An Iranian man named Sajad Garibi calls himself the Iranian Hulk. He's six foot two, which is definitely taller than average, but not tall enough to justify all of his 392 pounds. Although he's not as obviously bulbous and injected as his Brazilian counterpart, you don't just get this way by doing a few push-ups. There have been rumors circulating that the two Hulks could actually face off against each other in an MMA fight, but so far nothing has materialized. Although Alves has addressed it on Instagram with a message to the Iranian, I'm going to rip off your head. Mustafa Ismail, also known as Egyptian Popeye and Big Mo, officially holds the Guinness World Record for biggest biceps in the world. But not everyone believes that his 31-inch biceps are real. It's obvious that they're out of the ordinary, but are they actually fake? Ismail himself has denied it. In an attempt to clear his name, he appeared in a Japanese TV documentary where he got blood tests and x-rays to prove that he is 100% au naturel. According to him, the tests all came back negative for synthol and implants but the Guinness Book of World Records has removed him from their website for the time being. But not everyone tries to keep their synthol use a secret. One 48-year-old Brazilian man has become famous for not only using synthol, but being proud of it. His name is Valdir Segado, but on the internet, he goes by Valdir Synthol. He got built using more traditional means until 2013, when he decided to start injecting himself with the chemical cocktail to get that otherworldly disproportionate Popeye look. Since then, he's become famous, with more than 26,000 followers on his Instagram account, where he posts photos of himself flexing with captions about his synthol use. Suror Sultan is one of the most left field examples on this list. He's obviously doing something not quite natural to get his muscles, but that's not what's most captivating about him. 
He doesn't just do his own bodybuilding, he actually owns his own gym called Surur Fitness Center, where he coaches others and even hosts bodybuilding contests in Abu Dhabi. But he's also got an amazing YouTube channel where he posts videos of himself working out. But that is only the beginning. He makes amateur comedy videos with his friends and nostalgic montages of his childhood. He sings duets with his sister and drives around in sports cars and ridiculous modded motorcycles. He even makes PSAs about helping stray cats. In all sports, there are people who get more famous for cheating, like Ben Johnson, Lance Armstrong, or Barry Bonds. The same thing is true for bodybuilding and for Greg Valentino. Valentino originally got famous as a natural bodybuilder, training for decades and even winning contests without the use of any steroids or synthetic oils. But once he discovered how easy it was to bulk up by using a mixture of equipoise and testosterone propionate, he went all in and he denies ever using synthol. He apparently injected 6,000 milligrams of the mixture directly into his biceps every week. He described how mixing the testosterone and equipoise made it more effective than synthol. Synthol just works one way, he said. It stretches the fascia. With equipoise and propionate, you get the double whammy. You get the stretch from the oil, plus you get the localized growth from the drugs themselves. At their peak, his biceps measured 27 inches. But eventually it reached a breaking point, quite literally. One of his arms was hit with a bat, and it filled with blood. So a doctor had to pop it. Valentino described what happened next as less of an explosion than a deflation. And the evidence is still there today. When the muscle disappeared, the skin that covered it did not, and it hung off his arm in flaps. He eventually got the extra skin surgically removed, and now on one arm, he's got a little crater, and on the other, a scar. He uses these physical marks as evidence of the fact that he has never used synthol, a fact which it seems he'll be trying to explain away for the rest of his life. Jorge Kuwagi is without a doubt the most ambitious fraud on this list. He first became a public figure in Mexico, his home country. In the year 2001 is when he showed up on the boxing scene and claimed that in the course of his so-called boxing career, he was undefeated. And after some obviously fixed matches, he retired from the ring. But then in 2015, at the ripe young age of 47, he came back to boxing. This time he showed up in a match in the Philippines with some strange looking pecs. He proceeded to knock out his opponent in about two minutes. And it seemed like he did the whole thing in slow motion. The consensus is that in what has to be the strangest midlife crisis ever, Kawagi got pectoral implants and flew to the Philippines to fight in a staged boxing match in front of a bunch of people he had never seen before in his life and would probably never see again. And not all fake bodybuilders are bodybuilders in the traditional sense where they go on stage and participate in a contest. Justin Jedlicka made the decision that he would very literally just build his body. He wanted to look like a Ken doll. And after more than 100 surgeries and almost $200,000, he really does look like one. Usually you hear about people getting like a facelift or a butt lift, but Jedlica has tweaked his whole body down to the most minute details from head to toe to create what he calls the ideal male physique. What's most interesting is that he doesn't treat his plastic surgery like something shameful that needs to be hidden. He sees it as a creative outlet, and he sees himself as the sculptor of his own body. Born into a family of bodybuilders, Brad Castleberry was groomed from childhood to become one. He began in competitions, but eventually shifted his focus onto business, using his body as an ad to sell his Castleberry branded supplements. Although the muscles on his body are definitely not filled with oil, he has been accused of using fake weights in some of his YouTube and Instagram videos. Castleberry has denied it, but the claims against him have steadily increased. Although at the same time, it's pretty likely that his detractors are just mean people on the internet. But maybe the weirdest fake bodybuilder is not a single person at all. The whole world of professional bodybuilding has, and probably will continue to be, full of much more subtle cheating. In fact, at this point, it's not even considered cheating, it's just the norm. Take what Arnold Schwarzenegger, the most famous bodybuilder ever, said about his steroid use. I have no regrets about it, because at that time, it was something new that came on the market, and we went to the doctor and did it under doctor's supervision. So, everything in moderation then?
With these extreme examples in mind, what do you think of fake bodybuilders? Are they a bad influence on young gym rats or are they only hurting themselves? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to The Richest.